this is Daryl with Roanoke Hobby. My amateur radio call sign is Kilo India 4 Lima Lima Alpha KI4 LLA. And today we're going to do what I'm going to call the uh, DMR Radio Roundup. We're going to take a look at four different uh, brands and models of the new dual band DMR radios that have VHF, UHF. They, they all do uh, DMR uh, tier two, uh, more moto turbo compatible, and they all do um, analog and digital. They all come with a programming cable. They all come with the charging base. But what we're going to look at is some of the differences and price ranges between the models to give someone who's shopping around for a DMR radio kind of a baseline um, to compare the, the four popular models. But to start off with, I'm going to just briefly talk about kind of where, where things got started and um, some of the first radios that kind of hit the market and when uh, DMR started really uh, picking up on the scene. And of course, probably most people know DMR started out as a commercial radio service um, for uh, business and uh, public safety and, and um, government agency use. And it got adopted and got picked up by the amateur radio um, hobby uh, hobbyists. So um, probably in the very beginning, and this was a little bit before I was involved, uh, before I had gotten into DMR, um, you could uh, pick up some used uh, commercial radios and um, they were probably um, adapted um, or maybe slightly modified to work on the amateur radio frequencies. And those those were your very first, you know, amateur radio uh, use of DMR. And then um, where things really started getting interesting was when some um, some of these radios started coming up on the market, like the Titera MD380. So it shows up and it's under $100. And it's a single band. So there was a model that was VHF and there was a model which was UHF. This is a UH, UHF Titera MD380. So you'll hear a lot of people on DMR that's got this radio. And the Standard features were, were good. It was a good quality build radio um, and not much longer, uh, not much later after it hit the market, uh, someone figured out how to modify the firmware to, to get some extra features that wasn't built in in the, in the uh, factory firmware. So MD380 tools shows up. And, you know, at first it was a little bit of... Um, a challenge to get it it loaded onto the radio. Several people came out with uh, with um, tools that make it easier to load the uh, the modified firmware on the radio. But some of the things that you've got were um, you know better font on the screen, um, last heard, um, the ability to load the DMR ID um, user ID database on the radio so that when you're receiving a transmission, you see the call sign and the name of the person that's talking. So that became, you know, just hugely popular to be able to do those kind of things with an MD380 and also an MD390. Uh, the two models uh, both could be modified with the MD380 tools uh, firmware. So that's kind of the introduction where things kind of got started. But the Biggest downside was you had to buy uh, separate radios if you wanted VHF. And um, since it did analog and digital, if you had an MD380, uh, you could do analog UHF. But depending on where you live, you, you know, they may not be um, a UHF uh, 70 centimeter repeater. Or if there was, maybe it wasn't used nearly as much. The, to be honest... Two meter uh, FM repeaters are still kind of the king in the 
in the handheld arena is that's you know there's so many two meter repeaters and so many people still using it so it's really would be handy to have a dual band dmr radio and so that's what we're going to start looking at next and we're going to look at four different models okay so the the first one we're going to look at is going to be the bofang rd5r and not to get confused with an earlier model that came out uh, a year prior to this i think it might have been a dm5r which pretty much failed horribly on the U.S. market because it was not a true uh, Tier 2 um, Moto Turbo compatible DMR radio. And um, there was a lot of disappointed people and there was software, software up, firmware upgrades available. Don't think it, it ever really caught on. And... Um, I don't have any personal experience with that. But this is kind of a collaborative effort between Bofeng and Radioddity. And uh, hopefully I'm getting the names pronounced uh, fairly close. Um, I'm sure people will let me know if I'm not pronouncing it right. But this, as a lot of people I'm sure will recognize, is the same form factor as the hugely popular um, Bofeng um, UV5R and all the different variants. Um, it does have a slightly little nicer chrome face here, but it's got the same same set of buttons, the same layout. Uh, it does the exact same thing. The, the, the call button uh, will turn on the little built-in flashlight it's 5 watts output uh, with switchable between 5 watts and 1 watt. Um, you can um, take a look here. It's got a slightly better battery than the original uh, Bofang. It's an 1800 milliamp hour. I don't know how well that shows up on the camera. 1800 milliamp hours. It's got the battery clip that attaches to the body of the radio instead of the battery. Um, to me, that's uh, a nice little plus there. Um, one, of, one of my pet peeves is uh, the belt clips that only attach to the battery. So you got to buy multiple belt clips if you're going to have a spare battery. But the RD5R is kind of your entry level. Um, you'll find it anywhere between like $56 to $79. You'll see it on sale, um, a lightning deal or something like that at the $56 range. And it, you know, it's a no frills uh, way to get started in uh, DMR. It has uh, a monochrome screen. You can um, program in uh, VHF and UHF, analog and digital same same concept in DMR you have your um, channels uh, that you put in with your talk groups and load those channels into zones and then you can um, have multiple zones and you pick which zone you want to select so all all the things that you you are familiar with with DMR is available on the RD5R the one thing it uh, does not have, it does not have the ability to load in um, the um, DMR user ID database. So all, you can just set it in the settings where you see the DMR ID on the screen when, when you're receiving a transmission from someone. Um, but let's see what else. It, it holds uh, 1,024 channels. I think I already mentioned it's 5 watt output. It's got um, a slightly better antenna for the dual band that uh, it's in. It's, it's branded with radio oddity, so it's a radio oddity antenna on there. So it's slightly better than the stock um, Bofeng antenna that you see on analog radios. Um, I would say, and you're kind of seeing it happen in an action, it just so happens in the building I'm in, I'm picking up some RF interference. The uh, 
receiver section front end seems to be a little touchy I carried this radio on me for a couple of weeks trying it out and driving around town and in different places uh, it did seem to be kind of sensitive to uh, radio frequency interference on the receiver so I would say probably a weak point on this is is the receiver section but that's just my opinion without any scientific data but anyway this this is a, a good entry level uh, budget radio to get if someone who's just maybe just getting their license and want to try DMR so that's going to be entry one number one in the uh, DMR radio roundup next up is the uh, radio oddity GD 77 and as one of the the first things that I kind of noticed it's the same kind of size make and feel as the MD380 and uh, it also has the uh, battery clip that attaches to the body of the radio um, the other thing you notice I noticed right off the bat is it just has the volume and vo uh, on off and volume switch there's no channel selector knob uh, the MD380 had a, a 16 position knob so you were kind of limited to um, 16 channels in a zone so you had to switch zones and then switch channels um, here uh, you can pick the zones from the menu and then uh, select your channels from the keypad and that's a that's a nice little feature uh, the GD 77 is also a monochrome screen and um, you might notice it looks uh, very much the same uh, the uh, firmware between the the RD5R and the GD77 are very similar. Uh, you still have to use uh, the respective CPS software for that model. And so the firmware is not interchangeable, but like I said, the software and the firmware are very similar. Same kind of thing. You go into the menu here and you can pick your zones and uh, selector zones uh, one thing I did notice that you can do you have a couple side buttons here I programmed the, the blue side button which kind of stands out it's a different color press and hold and go right into selecting the zone so that's a little bit faster way of changing the zone so that's user programmable you can program one of these buttons a short press or a long press uh, to, to go into the mode where you can change your zone uh, this radio um, also has 5 watts output so it's switchable between 5 watts and 1 watt take a look at the battery capacity there this um, has a 2200 milliamp hour battery and as you kind of could tell there it very firmly attaches to the radio so it's got a good solid click to it and uh, uh, both both the uh, RD5R and the GD77 have the standard Kenwood um, plug here for your programming cable and your speaker mic um, I would mention that the the one thing that's a step up with the GD77 is that it does have the ability to program in the DMR ID database but limited to 10,000 entries so it won't hold the entire database and you do have to use a separate software utility uh, there's a certain key combination that you press while you turn the unit on so it goes into a mode where you can load in the user ID database and um, there's a website uh, amateurradio.digital has a very handy utility for several models of DMR radios where you can um, select uh, what region uh, state or country that you want to download into a file for the user ID database so you can you could select maybe just uh, your state and neighboring states to keep the total count down uh, of the IDs to a reasonable number 
that will uh, fit in this radio. So like what I did, um, I live in the state of Virginia, so I included uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, West Virginia, Maryland in the, the database. So I just, the contacts I'm most likely going to make uh, from my location. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, this, this radio with the extra features and uh, the bigger, better quality build sells for a little bit more uh, around $95. Again, you can catch it on sale or a lightning deal on Amazon sometimes for a little bit less, but it's still under still under $100. So it's, uh, again, it's a good entry point for someone new to DMR. Okay, so our third entry in the DMR radio roundup here is going to be the uh, Anytone D868. And so this is where the price jumps up, but so do the features. So this would be, it'd be a good first radio. You know, it's still under $200, but it may be someone who's uh, had an MD380 or uh, another um, used radio um, they've used on DMR and they're, they're ready for kind of a step up. And that's, that's where the, the Anytone D868 really kind of steps in. So like the Titera MD380, uh, this has a color screen. It's a 1.7 inch TFT uh, screen. So you've got a nice big uh, color screen to look at. One of the first features that uh, jumped out was um, it, it's we're back to having a selector knob, but it's not limited to 16 positions. The selector knob goes all the way around. So uh, you can have more than 16 um, channels in your zone and you scroll through your zone. Um, with the, um, as you can see, it just keeps on going. It doesn't stop just at 16. And um, so you can scroll through your zone. You, you can very easily switch between zones on the, uh, the center keypad here. It's very quick and easy to switch between your zones. Um, the other thing that I noticed uh, very early, it's got a very loud and clear audio output. It's got a full uh, one watt uh, audio output and and a very clear speaker. So, um, and I'm in a vehicle and uh, I've got a lot of road noise. I can turn the volume up on this and I can hear what people are saying very clearly. Uh, another feature this has that's uh, very handy, it's got uh, four power settings. So in turbo mode, it's, it's seven watts output. On high, it's the usual five watts. It's got 2.5 watt setting and a low setting with one watt. So it's really handy to have four uh, output settings. Uh, a, a neat feature, um, it, this button here on top can be uh, user programmable. It's usually like um, used for like an emergency uh, hot button. I got it programmed that the Anytone can also do FM radio uh, just like the Bofangs can do. So I actually have it programmed so if I want to listen to FM radio I've got a little quick button. But of course that button can be programmed to do anything that you need it to do. Uh, another handy feature, it can uh, in the CPS software you can have multiple DMR IDs. So say um, several people in your family um, are licensed ham radio operators and they each have their own DMR ID number. You can easily from the keypad switch between uh, the different DMR ID numbers so that a different person can use the, the same radio. That's a handy feature. It uh, holds 4,000 memory channels, uh, up to 10,000 talk groups, and it can hold uh, up to 150,000 DMR user ID numbers. So this radio can, can hold the entire DMR 
user ID database. And another feature that uh, I don't want to sound like I'm just going on and on and on about the Anytone, but um, loading the DMR ID database into the radio is made easier because it is a, it's a function built into the CPS software. So the same software that you use to program in your channels and your zones, you can also uh, have a utility for loading in the uh, user ID database. And it gives you an option um, when you're doing an update, when you're plugging it in to do some programming, you can select whether you want to um, download and upload both the ID database and the configuration or the configuration only. Because to be quite honest, if you load in the entire um, DMR ID database, it does take a while. Um, there's like over 105,000 uh, IDs in the database at this point in time. So um, let's see, what else can we say? It's, um, go ahead and switch it off here so I don't short anything out. Um, it's got a 21 milliamp hour battery and it's got a 3100 milliamp hour battery. Just so happens um, I have the 2100 milliamp hour battery, but it has the 3100, uh, which I think is the standard battery that comes with this radio. So it's got a uh, high capacity battery that comes with it as a standard. It just so happens in this example, I had the 2100 um, loaded on there. The 2100 makes it a little thinner uh, and a little easier to hold, but it's still, um, still within acceptable um, weight and uh, feel with the extra capacity battery on there. In fact, it, it's got a hefty feel to it with the, uh, with the 3100 amp hour battery. Probably the only downside, it does clip, the uh, belt clip attaches to the batteries. So if you buy multi, you buy some spare batteries, you're going to, you have to make sure you get the, the clip, the extra clip with you. So before I move on, uh, one thing I forgot to add uh, about the Anytone was the price range. Uh, like I did, I mentioned uh, it, it is slightly higher in price. There are several um, dealerships in the U.S. that uh, retail the Anytone, and it, uh, it's anywhere between like um, 169 $179 depending on kind of the configuration. Um, the package that I got from um, from the particular dealer that I purchased this from came with the 3100 milliamp hour battery, one antenna, the programming cord, the charger, and the base. I think there are some other dealers that sell different combinations, uh, might include a um, speaker mic, so there, there's a little wider variation on price, but it's going to be around the $169 range um, for this particular model. Okay, so now we're ready for our last entry in the uh, DMR radio roundup. And, and, and this is the one where I hope I'm getting it, pronouncing it right, but the uh, Alunts HD1. And I chose the this one to be last in the roundup because this is the this is the workhorse of the bunch. Uh, just like all the other models we, we looked at, it's dual band, VHF, UHF, DMR, digital, and analog. Um, and it's also it's also the highest uh, price, but it still stays under two hundred dollars. The this, this radio without the GPS is $189. Uh, with the GPS uh, built in, it's around $199. So it's just, just a hair under $200. But, and hopefully you can kind of see in the, uh, in the, when, in the camera here, how much bigger and heftier this is. I mean, this this radio has got some heft. If you're going to be doing some some heavy duty uh, situations, 
that you need to carry this radio and use this radio for its uh, its uh, weather it's water resistant and dust uh, dust resistant it's got the um, screw on cover over the speaker mic um, it does use this type of connector instead of the Kenwood connector it uses this type of connector I'm sure it's got a name but I just don't know what it is and I'm sure someone at some point in time will correct me on that or the uh, this is the uh, the um, Elon speaker mic that you can get for this model um, and the programming cable also attaches here I got the programmable side buttons um, it's got the um, the channel selector knob uh, just like the previous model I just mentioned it does not have a 16 stop limit it just keeps going and you can select through you can scroll through your zones um, this also has a very uh, high quality um, one watt output on the speaker it is very crisp and clear and um, very easy to hear the other thing uh, that makes this a real workhorse is the uh, output is a full 10 watts on the high setting so it's got it's got three power settings high 10 watts uh, 5 watts at medium so that's probably where you might want to keep it most of the time and it also has a low setting um, with uh, one watt it's a 3200 amp hour milliamp hour battery holds uh, 3000 3, channels um, and 1000 priority contacts so you can have your your group um, your group calls for your talk groups and then you also can have another set of priority contacts like a list of uh, co-workers or uh, friends or people that you contact re regularly so you have a priority contact list uh, that you can set in the CPS software it also uh, is capable of doing the FM radio reception uh, like uh, many of the radios have it holds it does have the ability to load in the DMR ID uh, database in the CPS software um, <clears throat> I do believe it does have a hundred thousand ID limit so um, the user ID li um, database has grown to the point where you can't put the entire worldwide database but you can definitely put all of like US Canada and I think I have mine's uh, UK Australia US and Canada in the user ID database and it it's under the hundred thousand and again it uh, is very easily uh, loaded into the radio with the CPS software and the uh, cable let's see I think I've already mentioned the price but you know the biggest feature and um, yes it's got the clip that goes on to the battery it's got a little button here on the bottom for releasing the releasing the battery so take a look 3200 milliamp hour so it's got a hefty got a hefty battery which just adds to the the uh, that look and feel of the battery of the uh, radio uh, in your hand with that uh, big extra capacity you know this this is a, a handful um, it's got a nice sturdy uh, belt clip so the belt clip plus the uh, screw on uh, speaker mic connector makes this a very heavy duty uh, heavy use uh, radio so for a little extra money and you know you're gonna be putting your DMR um, dual band um, radio through a lot of heavy use this is uh, this is a good choice for a little extra money and like I said it still stays under $200 so there you have it. Uh, we got them all lined up together for a group shot uh, to wrap up the, the DMR radio roundup. Uh, hope this uh, video has been useful and uh, give us a thumbs up, a like, a thumbs up, uh, subscribe if uh, you, you find any of this information useful. And I appreciate uh, you uh, watching the video and stopping by.